What's going on? My name is Addison Allen. I am 23. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. So what do you do for a living 23 years old? Yeah, uh, so I am currently a actor, musician, bartender, and uh, I, I guess model. Uh, but uh, it's, I get more work as an actor than I do as a model. Really? How's the acting? Well, you're based out of Houston. I am. How's the acting scene in Houston? Uh, I actually it's a big city, but I was just on uh, two uh, sets for production on. Well, I guess that was uh, that was Saturday. I, I had, even with the strike going on, it was non-union stuff. It's all non-union stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what kind of gigs do you normally get? Uh, so. I get more work than anything as a musician. I've been doing that for the longest amount of time. Interesting. What do you do? Uh, I'm a bass player, lead singer. Okay. Uh, I, and I, w I did that professionally from like the age of 12 uh, until about 22. I took a year. What does that mean? Are you I, like, what is there like a place? I was playing where? in bars at 12. At 12? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, there, well, like usually when like there's really young, like talented people, there's like YouTube videos of them going viral and stuff. No, happened? no, no. We did it the authentic way. We 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 went out and gigged. And uh, who's we? Who are you with? Uh, I w I started a band called The Weeds back at then. At twelve, you did. At twelve, yeah. How old was everyone else? Uh, everybody. The other uh, the other member that I started it with before we added other people. He was also twelve. We were we were a couple you guys kids. Good. And when we started, no, of course not, no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we got better. We had we had a, you know a lot of time to work on. And over the years, we released a few albums. And you look like a bass player. Yeah, I get that a lot. So you do a lot of things, a lot of the gig stuff. I'm assuming what pays the bills is the bartending. Oh, or else you wouldn't have it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 always good to have a day job. There's not too much, uh, you know, music work during the week, unless you're talking about just going to open mics here? for exposure. Uh, out here, it's different, but yeah, I, was I mean, say, the, more live music exactly for sure. than anywhere in the world. But the the uh, the travel expense cuts into my ability to run out here every week. Yeah, that's fair. So I try that's to fair, plot it out in advance. Pursue, now, so what do you bring in on a monthly basis, on average, across everything? Across so, everything? Yeah. Think high months, think low months. Where are we right in the middle? I would average it at about 2200 oh, I thought you were about to say 1000 I was about to be like, dude. Okay. Not with those credit cards like that, no. No. I was going to, yeah. If you had $20,000 a month, I would hope this terrible debt doesn't exist. But either way. Yep. Before we get into that. We'll I mean, get into that, yeah. 2200 so living in a major city like Houston, I mean, it is, at least compared to Austin and I think Dallas, it is on the cheaper side, but it's still pretty expensive. 2200 how are you surviving? Uh, I'm actually, I'm staying with family at the moment just to oh, cut yeah. down on expenses because I have so much family in Houston. I was going to say min rent would be like minimum 50% of your income. Yeah. Uh, Houston, before probably. that, I was renting a three bedroom with my uh, oh. with my ex-girlfriend uh, mm -hmm. and that was, uh, that was about 1475 a month. <sighs> And that was only a eleven hundred twenty five square feet okay. in a, in a suburb of Houston. It's not even downtown. That was on the outside. Hmm. So, what is your financial situation? Just give us a, just a recap of your situation. What are you? What is up with your finances? Twenty three. Um, so, after being wildly irresponsible in my late teens, uh, after getting a couple lines of credit, so like two years ago. Okay. Uh, two years ago. Four. Uh, yeah, but like it was like like right at like eighteen or nineteen, I, mm -hmm. I I got enough credit line where I felt like I could just like ah oh, you know I'll pay it back, uh, but then I had a couple of things happen, you know, uh, eighteen. Uh, lost my house to Hurricane Harvey, uh, 2020 oh. with the pandemic. I lost all ability to be able to go out and play music because well, everything that shut sense. down. Yeah. Uh, so then I started picking up day jobs. I worked in a, in a couple warehouses. Uh, I worked for an estate sale company. I, I, I did a lot of just odds and ends kind of jobs, uh, just keeping up with bills, basically living paycheck to paycheck. The, the the Hurricane Harvey situation, were you on your own or with the family at that no, point? No, no, I was living with family, but it just changed my what finance. What was the insurance situations around We that? did have flood insurance. We got yeah. paid out, but uh, for the first half of my senior year of high school, I was actually living in a fifth wheel camper uh, yeah. because our, it was, I mean, it was parked in our backyard. We weren't having to like, you know, be off site. That place, but, yeah, that whole, like, it was devastating. It was rough. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I had yeah. a foot and a half of water in my house. And if you don't want to get f***ed or get f***ed in a good way, then, you know, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button because we're trying to get to 750,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. Run it up.
But that sucks. Even yeah. with the happiness of subscribers, I mean, that sucks. Absolutely. That yeah. and, and I mean, we got paid out and everything. Uh, my, my parents were able to, to claim their flood insurance and, and mm-hmm. get everything set back better than it was before. So COVID, then you didn't have a job doing a lot of it. Now, I know Texas was one of the earlier states to reopen, but mm-hmm. of course, there was also local community guidelines for a while until the state said that everything could be open. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely a mix and match where you were for how long things were closed. But And, you- and even during that time where they reopened stuff, there was a period in like like March of that year where they did reopen bars for like a, l- a few yeah. weeks and then shut everything back down. But, but even during that time... Well, during that time, though, I mean, many people were getting... Because of the... Uh, different bills that were passed at everything, there was like people were getting more off of unemployment at that time Mm -hmm. than many Americans make when they're just living. So why did you go into credit card debt? Did you not try to take advantage of those programs at the time? So I got uh, I got my stimulus payments like everybody else. But as far as like a PPP loan for my small business, well, not that, but just unemployment. I tried to go on unemployment. Uh, they really cracked down on some of the, uh, you know, some of the process that you had to go through in order to well, receive you lost those payments. Gig work, I guess. Exactly. Did you, you, you didn't have a job at the time that was like the bar job or anything like that? No, not really. Yeah. I, mean, I was playing, I, I was playing three shows a week prior to the pandemic. Yeah. I can. Okay. Yeah. So I see, I see that being an issue. Yeah. And I mean, you had a LLC formed and everything. You had a business. No, it's uh, okay. it, it's so, yeah, a um, what do they call that? Um, sole proprietorship. Oh, so did you try to go down the world? Well, mm. okay. So then you went into credit card debt. Now yeah. we've been open for two years now, mm-hmm. basically two and a half mm-hmm. in Texas, maybe even three. Yeah. at this point. Why are you still in credit card debt? And that, why are you making yourself go further into it from what at least I saw? That lineup uh, from that time period uh, disbanded. Uh, what? In uh, the lineup of that band. You don't uh, give a shit. Why didn't you just go get a job the last few years and oh, pay this off? Job. I've had a job the last Why few years. do we still have this debt then? Uh, largely uh, irresponsibility. Uh, okay, cause, so you said off. irresponsibility of the teenage years, but yeah. now the pieces are coming together where the irresponsibility has mostly just continued. Uh, it's it's definitely less than it was. Uh, and also there's a huge charge on there that's very recent. I just purchased a new portfolio for my modeling and acting career, and that that's uh, that was mm. over $3,000. <laughs> okay. Why? Uh, Why? What? Portfolio what? What do you mean purchase a portfolio? What, what even is that? So uh, I paid for the production, the hair and makeup all myself. I purchased my website and I also got uh, a couple social media people that are run, uh, working on my socials to make them look better. Ah, buddy. You're in the beginning stages of this career mm-hmm. of the modeling and I'm totally supporting the side gigs and just hustles and trying to make it, trying to make the dream happen. I... I fully support that i mean i come from the world of music composition and i'm in the world of video making so trust me i get it Mm. but what the three thousand dollars when we're probably not able to uh, how how long would it take from modeling only to make that back for you based on what you've earned so far uh based on what i've earned so i mean i'm honestly my page has only been active for like a month and i'm already receiving both paid and uh and work for prince right now so like how much have you made how much have I made? Mm-hmm. Uh, just a few hundred so far, but that's that's over the course of. And it's like, because you paid three thousand dollars. Yeah, I think that mm-hmm. I, I think that there's a social media. Really, you couldn't go onto other people's pages and figure out what worked and just hustled for yourself. You had to immediately spend money you did not have to I do think, this. I, I honestly, I assume from from what I've experienced with social media in the past, you, uh, using social for my own band and stuff, uh, a lot of that, I mean, you're going to spend uh, bits and pieces of money over and get very little gains off of it. Well, I understand paying people for their time in terms of like photography and stuff like that. That yeah. obviously makes sense. Mm-hmm. But in terms of getting people to try to make your socials better, I, uh, just starting from the ground level, mm-hmm. especially when you're not making a return on the investment... Why didn't you try to hustle this at all? You've only been doing it for a month and you put $3,000 of money to have into it. I didn't pay anyone to make this YouTube channel like good mm-hmm. until I could start bringing on people because I, I, you know, 
I was grinding from the beginning to the point where enough money came in for me to then reinvest in the company. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that. But you just immediately spent $3,000 you didn't have, and you're not getting a return on investment. And just social media stuff, not just oh, social media yeah, stuff, yeah, but yeah. Did, you didn't have to pay for that. You yeah. could have paid a photographer 500 or or $1,000 for... Oh, less than that. I know a bunch of photographers. Yeah, okay. So, well, then $3,000, that's making it even look worse then. It's it's the, the representation, having the backing, uh, making my product look the way that in the industry wants it. Because I don't have, ex I didn't have prior experience in modeling or acting But that's when you learn, right? Why not watch a few YouTube videos, go down some modeling websites that you personally look up to mm. and create a game plan based on the stuff you have instead of spending money you don't have. You're digging yourself further in a hole and you're not making a return on the investment. Mm -hmm. Well, that, I'm, and I, I'm, You've made I'm a couple a hundred hustling. bucks so far. That's great, but I wonder if you spent an extra month learning how to do half of it yourself and then paying someone for their time correctly mm -hmm. uh, for taking uh, photos and editing and everything like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not against that. No. Um, and then doing that, I wonder, would you have not still made the couple hundred bucks? I have no idea. Uh, but also, Why don't you I mean, try it first before go? Because, okay, it sounds like I'm digging into you a lot just for this no, no, one you're thing. You're good. No, no, no. I'm saying this for the audience. It sounds like, yeah, I'm just digging into you this. It's because I know what we're about to look at. Mm. And you spent money you didn't even have close to have. No. And you've dug yourself more and more into debt for a want, really, a dream. I'm good with this, but cash flow it. Cash flow it. Okay. Make the money, pay off the debt first, and then cash flow it. Have an emergency fund. We have, what, $15 saved up? In a savings account so oh no the the savings account that's with my credit human account that's just a dummy account that you have to have a savings account open with them in order to have a loan pulled with them that's just for my truck note yeah that car loan yeah goodbye old clunky wallet hello sleek new nice wallet i want to thank today's video sponsor who has completely changed the way i carry around my essentials ridge wallet it's not just a wallet, it's a lifestyle. With its slim and minimalistic style, it's become a daily essential for over 3 million people. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards and there's even room for cash. Plus, with over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, you can find the perfect match for your style. And here's the best part. The Ridge Wallet has over 50,000 five-star reviews. People absolutely love it. But what has really impressed me while using this so far? It's durability. Each wallet comes with a lifetime durability thanks to its premium design and premium materials that it's made out of. And let's not forget the RFID blocking technology. It protects you from those digital pickpockers, keeping your information safe and secure. And the Ridge Wallet team is so confident that you'll love it as well that they're letting you test drive it for 99 days. And if you're not fully satisfied, just simply send it back and you'll get a full refund. So upgrade your everyday carry with Ridge Wallet. Make sure to check out the link at the top of the description or go to ridge.com forward slash Caleb. Use my special coupon code Caleb to get 10% off your purchase. Don't miss out on this fantastic offer and thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this episode. What would you give yourself financial score in your own opinion in zero to 10? Now? Mm -hmm, where you are right now. Oh, at most four. Okay. So you think you're average, middle of the road, pretty much? No, I... I well, I'm, five would I'm be putting, average, middle of the road. I'm putting 10 at, like, you know, the one percenters. Yeah, 10 is 100% perfect in every way whatsoever. Five yeah. would be middle of the road. You gave yourself one point under them. Yeah, because I'm not... I okay. mean, I'm not homeless or anything. And I'm not delinquent on any of my loans or anything like that. Okay, just making sure. We're on the same page there. So let's start with the credit card debts. I don't think this is where you put the big purchase that we just talked about, but we have two credit cards. Credit card uno. We have oh lord, here we go. Well, we started with 2,586, then we paid off 250, which is great. That was more than a minimum monthly payment of $88. Mm -hmm. Then you spent $134. See, if we are getting out of it, why do we then put money back into it and go? You didn't go further than the hole on this one, mm -hmm. but you still put money out of it, making it even harder for you to 
pay off the entire thing quicker and you lost $63 of interest. $63 was lost and yet you still decided to make $134 of purchase on it. That doesn't make sense with an $88 minimum monthly payment. And what was the money spent on there? Sure, you did $5 at a grocery store. That's awesome. You did a little bit at a gas station too, but then the rest is bullshit. It's Torchies and Ninja Ramen and Whataburger. At least eat a good burger. Come on. Ninja Ramen again yeah, and so McNary's good. downtown Houston thing. So, yeah. And you've lost $300 in interest this month. Mm -hmm. So, again, you mm -hmm. said you invested the three, uh, what was it, $3,000 or whatever. So, you get a couple hundred dollars back so far. But yeah. you've lost just on this card, not paying it off $300 this year so far. Yeah, no. And we're just halfway through the year. So, current balance really didn't go down because you put the money went right back on. So, even after yeah. making and payment and then making the purchases and then the stupid interest on it it only went from two thousand five hundred eighty-six dollars and one cent to two thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars. So what progress was made? Basically nothing. Why the f possibly spending on a card that you probably want to pay off, I assume, or do you like getting squeezed for sixty-three dollars of interest on a monthly basis? No, I am trying to pay it off. Uh are you trying to pay it off? Why'd you put money on it? Because uh, the last, uh, the job that I just left uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, everything, it was a bartending job. What you, okay. Uh, because every, every single dime of tips that came in there on credit card was put in a tip pool. Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, 4th of July, I did $3,500 by myself, added over $500 to the tip pool. Okay. And that gets split up by week, not by day. That's no fun. And so my last paycheck coming out of there was like $800. Did you have another job weeks. lined up before you left? I, I so I work as a promotional bartender as well for this uh, this company called High Profile Promotion. Were you able to make up the same amount of hours? Uh, no, it's not the same. Then you hours. do not leave a job yet, even if it's not 100% perfect, until you're fully able to make up the income source that you're losing mm. when you're in a death situation like this. Mm. If you have a fully funded emergency fund and you're making progress towards goals in life in mm. terms of the financial aspect of things, then okay, there's some wiggle room there. Mm. You don't even have close to an emergency fund, and f you, you are not paying off this credit card. You put the money back on, and with the interest, you only made progress of like $40. Yeah. So why did you, uh, no, that like job said, isn't perfect. I agree. I hate that. I, I don't like that system. Honestly, I hate the, our tip culture in general. It's stupid. Yeah. But why? Why didn't you wait can, until you could get the hours back somewhere else or at the other job? I can make as much money uh, as that I was making in tips from that job. Yeah. Playing two shows a week. And are you? Yeah, I've already played a couple shows. I got, I, I, I've, I've You've just played a couple from, shows. Are you playing a couple shows a week since you quit? Uh, so well, you fully only, made up the it's money? Only been, it's only been two weeks. Since, okay, so you've played four shows? Uh, I've played three shows. Okay, well, it's close. And you fully made up the money you would have lost? I, I've, I've been able to account for almost all of the income I would have gotten from post in that time. Okay, so in, we should have then made more progress on the card according to your original statement. Well, these, uh, the statements that I have pulled up here in front of you are, uh, I don't believe, have my most recent payment on them. Well, probably, I mean, this is the most recent statement that you sent, so that's all we have. Yeah. Well, we can, I guess we can look to where they are and... Uh, where they are now in a second, but then we have another card. So this is the venture. Yeah, this is the big one. Yeah, the big one that we put an investment on. Investment, by the way, that you are paying a lovely twenty six point seven per four in interest on. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. Previous balance two thousand four hundred forty four. Okay, we can probably make progress on that. Then we made a three hundred dollar payment. We are making progress. That's two hundred dollars more than the minimum monthly payment. Then you made a stupid four thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars of purchases. Why possibly? Why possibly are you digging yourself into that hole, man? You're in your early twenties. Mm -hmm. You are in the best decade of your life for compound growth, and we can talk about that because maybe you don't know about that. But you are in the position where you can easily become a multimillionaire by barely even contributing a fraction of your income. Yet you are deciding you want everything to go back into this card and uh, be sucked from you by this card. So you can lose $121 in interest on a monthly basis or $500 in interest this year so far. Mm -hmm. Why possibly if we're trying to pay off a card and you clearly can't pay it off much quicker, are you putting $4,289 to purchase on it? Uh, that's the one that has the, uh, the it was 
Okay, so you put an extra one thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars of purchases on top of the thirty thousand dollars. No, it wasn't. It was it, the the portfolio itself was like thirty six, thirty seven hundred dollars. It was. Uh, uh, you said three thousand earlier. No, it was it was over three thousand. Uh, the the number uh, the better the decimal, return on investment. Like, yeah. or I'm gonna die. I I'm I'm nervous about. It. I've been losing sleep over it every day. That's why I've Why'd been hustling. Why did you possibly do it? Or why didn't you save up enough money and then pay for it? Because it's not uh, like you don't make money. No, no, it's not that I don't make money. And also, I think that with uh, with my investment on myself, I, I'm gonna be able to push myself into higher paying jobs where I can make that back. And I'm I'm really hoping to make that back by the end of the year. I'm hoping you do too, but hoping's not gonna get us there. Photo Studio One, that's what it was. It was four thousand dollars. It was fifty dollars away from four thousand dollars. So three thousand dollars is disingenuous. That's what you're saying? Okay, come on. You can't make that back within $50 of some studio thing you paid for and then Lazy Dog Restaurant and then Ninja Ramen and Franklin Street Bar House and Jackson Brew Coffee and Pearl Lounge and the Bronze Bar, Bar Humble, Boo, or Boozer Bar Humble, Boozer Bar Humble, Boozer Bar Humble, and Captain Fox Hearts and Captain Fox Hearts. So that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. well, you went and just spent all both money. They're actually, they're... There was a grocery store for twenty dollars, and that's the one thing. That's the one thing that was in complete bullshit in here. Mm -hmm. Why do you not care about this credit card debt? No, I I do care. You are not demonstrating that you care. I'm not. Why aren't you demonstrating that you care? Well, uh, because if I, we can't figure out reasons other than oh, I'm just a little immature, which is what you said, then yeah. what? How are we gonna ever get to the bottom where you can improve your life? Well, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually I'm I'm doing more physical labor. I'm starting side businesses. I'm getting my money coming in from other income sources, so that way I can uh, pay my stuff off and with more passive income than me having to be up. That's at a fine. Bar. You do not necessarily have well okay your income's not great there's a little bit of an income issue yeah your spending issue is beyond though yeah. and you spent just on this card alone double what you bring in a month and i'm not blaming your income on that i'm blaming you swiping the card it's the spending yeah so okay you talk about that income but what how is that possibly gonna prevent okay what if you start bringing in four thousand dollars a month you're gonna spend eight thousand dollars on a card and don't just say no because you've demonstrated that that's what you do so again that's what, the what why this why this so uh, the, the way it came down to it, man, I, I've been I've been pra rather unhappy at, at the work that I've been doing, which okay. has led me to to going out and, and mm. you know, so diverting myself. Yeah, it's it's coping. Okay. It's diverting my attention away from the stress of the job and the stress of, you know, debt and, and all this bullshit. Sure. Uh, and going out with friends and stuff just trying to get away from all of it and that's what you see on those cards that makes sense if there if it is a cope for just a life that we are not overall satisfied with and work often just with the hours committed to it is you know take away the hours that we put into sleep it's the place we're at the most is work for sure uh, within our culture especially and yeah, if you're completely unhappy, coping completely makes sense. We just need to take that behavior and put it into something else that isn't digging yourself deeper in the hole because that stress of the debt is only going to build if you're just if the cope is just adding more yeah. to that, which is just going to no, sure. create a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's something we, we want to start avoiding. So we can talk about that. That's good. I'm glad you're able to recognize that in the end, that is the main issue that's surrounding your spending. Hopefully it's not an excuse. I'm going to take your uh, answer there to heart and believe that that's what it is. No. And that's, that's something like, I, you know, so I've been, I've been in therapy since January. Good. That was going to be my first recommendation. We didn't get there yet, but good. It is. I, I've, I've, worked actually quite a bit on my drinking problem i was at the point where i was i was oh. blacking out oh shit. and uh you know coming to dangerous situations oh my goodness and and just like i was i was acting in a manner that was going to get me killed yeah or arrested and so i i started seeing a therapist back in january i picked myself up from my bootstraps because i just gotten out of a relationship and lost a couple friends uh right at the end of last mm. year uh, and that was like a, that was a real low point. Yeah. And that's, uh, hard. that's what put me on the couch with my therapist. She has been one of the most wonderful blessings I've ever had Good. in my life. It's turned my shit around almost 180 degrees. Good. And I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm doing stuff like this. Like this was not even in the realm of possibility. Sure. Back, you know, even four months ago, not even six months. Yeah. Uh, 
And I, that's why I felt more comfortable putting that bet on myself, even though it's four grand, you know, mm. I know. Okay. Well, now I you're know. creating justification behind it. I'm starting to not like where this is going, but go ahead. Even if it's four grand, even if I'm putting it's myself a, a little bit, I know. Uh, but I, I've got a support system in place. My, I know that my, my people are, are going to, you know, help me out while I'm, while I'm putting myself together right now in these few weeks and few months mm -hmm. and getting to the point where not only am I back at, uh, back into the black, but I'm going to be making a profit. I'm going to play devil's advocate. And that is okay. You started seeing her in January and that's awesome. I'm so glad you took that step and let's continue taking that step. Mm -hmm. If we started to make progress and then why is the most recent statement that you are able to pull showing all this bad stuff? I mean, cause we're six months later. Mm. Where, where was the, it sounds like from what you just said, it's kind of a kick the can down the road. Like I have the support system. I'm going to get in the black. It's like, okay, I'm gonna, at some point that's cool. But mm. why has action not been, why has action not been taken at all in the last six months? Well, uh, the last six months actually at action, has been uh, financially, I should say, because yeah, you did okay. talk about you've improved uh, drinking issues and stuff. Yeah, like that. Fine, and financial action. Uh, I'm the, I mean, I've had, I've been working at uh, that one, that same job with the tip pulling and stuff. I've been working there since October. Okay. And through that, uh, even in my hiring speech, the uh, director, uh, he he was trying to talk to me about upward movement and benefits and uh, you know increasing pay status and stuff like that for nine months. Mm. Uh, and, and like you were just saying, just kicking the can down the road, like it's coming, you know, nobody else is in the running. And my last day there, they promoted somebody else. And I was like, I gotta go. I can't, okay. you guys can't. I don't think that answered my question though. Uh, well, no, uh, what I was, what I was saying is like, I, so I, that whole time I've been, I've been waiting for better financial gains from my own situation that I had already signed myself up for. Yeah. And I didn't want to leave the job and then submit myself to not receive those benefits. So I've just kind of stayed in place and been treading water for the last few months. I mean, I would have put more of an ultimatum on, not like a true ultimatum, like, yeah, give me this or I leave type of thing. Cause I mean, that isn't great. A good workplace relationship, mm. but in general, having that conversation and knowing that, okay, you know, I need to be at this point and mm. you know, within a certain amount of time. And if not, you know, then I just need to uh, looking out for myself, making sure I can take care of my own life. Might have to pursue other opportunities. Uh, like is the longer you just rely on someone else forever, you're not going to make it, you know? Exactly. And I don't want to keep putting money in somebody else's pocket. You know, I, I, I have been a small business owner, so I went out there and got myself jobs, you know, and, and the music industry is a, it's taken a bit of a dive in the last year. Uh, the gigs aren't paying as much as they were, uh, pre-pandemic but that's kind of expected those bars lost a lot of money but um you know me having to you know be at a, at a day job all the time i was surrendering a bunch of income missing out on a bunch of stuff that mm -hmm. i could have been making and i it, me just giving up on all of that and and or putting up that ultimatum and saying like give me this or i'm gonna go or so um, the reason that you've made progress on a lot of mental health stuff, but haven't made progress the last six months on your financial stuff. And in fact, have gotten worse mm. is just because you were not given a promotion that was talked about. Uh, well, no. Uh, the, what about your spending behavior? The spending behavior came, it, it, that's, it's cumulative. It was, you know, uh, depression and, and, and uh, interacting with uh, a manager who it, he and I didn't see eye to eye. So uh, would you say the therapy has been effective then? Because, you know, six months, I'm not saying there's a mm -hmm. deadline for it to have been effective, mm -hmm. not by any means. That's a progress. Yeah. Sometimes you got to go through uh, multiple therapists to uh, even find the one that works best for you. Like, have you guys talked about finances? You know, mm -hmm. we don't need to go yes. too deep in to your private session so just say what you want to say but have you've talked about finances yeah okay. absolutely then in six months again just i'm, I'm just trying to figure out something because uh, it's only gotten worse it, they, yeah like it, it has only gotten worse and there have actually there's been and you said it stems from depressive episodes stuff like that yeah and the therapy well, hasn't like you guys have not found proper solutions to um redirect the coping mechanisms to something more healthy I've tried a couple things. Uh, you know, I, I tried just tossing myself into like working out the way that I did whenever I was a little bit younger. Okay. Um, and it's just uh, staying where I'm at right now, staying with family, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to do it. So I wasn't, I didn't keep up with that. Uh, 
And so it, there, there was a couple of different activities and stuff that I, that I tried to throw in, even just like as simple as, you know, reading or playing more video games and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. just trying, trying to do something to just turn that, that stress off. But getting back into the, that, that's not your only dance. We have a car too. Now it's not the mm -hmm. worst interest rate in the world. What is this car? Uh, it's a Toyota Tundra here. Uh, 2015. Okay. With a balance of $10,126 at the time of the statement. With minimum monthly payments of 419. What is this? Three years? Four years? Uh, I think I got it in 2019, 2020. So oh, how many? Oh, when did you get it? 2019, 2020. I, is this uh, like 70? Two seventy four month repayment. Do you know what's the length of the term? Uh, I, I, I think it's I think it's five years. Yeah, I wonder if there's gonna be someone ever on the show again who doesn't have an extremely long car debt. It's at essentially six percent, rounded at six percent. Yeah, it's so that's not okay. It's not the worst because I mean, just the other day I was talking to someone who was like nineteen percent on his car, and that's obviously aggressively terrible. Ooh. But including depreciation and everything, yeah, the money that you're putting in here, I mean, it's probably like losing just as much as the S and P five hundred gains mm. overall in terms of the depreciation, the miles and everything and maintenance that you're putting on your oh, car, man, I've and then up, with man. the interest rate as well. So it's not a good place for the money to be, and we'd rather want to pay it off because you're probably going to get. I mean, you're going to at least get a 6% return on your investment with that money guaranteed. Mm. And then with everything else off, you know, it helps. I'm actually, I'm considering downsizing it because I used really? to, the reason why I got that truck is because I was having to pull my band trailer <laughs> three times a week around the city. But you bought it at peak car market. What do you think you can get for it today? Uh, oh, definitely not what I put into it, but I could, it, I can downsize and not be paying on a car loan every month. And well, then, I know, but what do you think you can sell that car for? Uh, as it sits, uh, I don't know. Oh, we'll look up in somewhere, a between, somewhere between 19 and 23, 24. Really? Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, but your minimum monthly payments across everything, we have $704 and 10 cents. Mm hmm which is a lot of money for someone to bring in $2,200 a month. And that's actually that I, I probably spend more than that because I actually pay usually about $450 to $500 on my car. Yeah, but your minimum monthly payments themselves, though, which is the scary part, is 30% of your income, 32% of your income. That's ridiculous. Know. That's crazy. Okay. And then you ate out $600 worth. $600. So now 60% of your income is gone. Uh, there's a... there's. Uh, charges in that statement that are from a family reunion where a bunch of people used my card and just gave me cash. How much? Uh, it was probably uh, two fifty, three hundred dollars. From what? Which ones? Uh, what purchases. It would have been there's a, a liquor store on there, and then there was at a resort. That wasn't an eating out. That wasn't an eating out. That was calculated in your overall BS spending, which was like oh, okay, okay. seven hundred to eight hundred dollars. Uh, I mean, it, it, so eating it's, out it's, itself was like six hundred. Six hundred dollars in eating out stacks up, dude. Ah, uh, damn. So people don't realize. Yeah. Your total bull surprise me. It's like seven hundred to eight hundred dollars. Okay. There's some that we're not always hundred percent certain on, but seven hundred to eight hundred dollars. Okay. Checking account started with fifty seven dollars. How can you even like afford to live with that, you know? Ended with six hundred dollars. So I'm glad we made progress there. Still, well, of course, we're negative overall with the. Well, once the department. money comes into my checking account, I mean, that's it gets dispersed amongst my bills and. and sure, that's fine. And stuff. we're immediately going to Jackson Brew Coffee, and we're getting to Kiddos and First Stop Food. Is that a grocery store, please? First Stop Food. Uh, I'm sure that's like a gas station. <sighs> to Kiddos. Okay, our Curus Vapor. Come on, that's an expensive addiction. It is. So, uh -huh. Oh, so you've worked on your alcohol stuff, which is great. Yeah. Are you, are you considering uh, working on that? It's obviously much easier said than done. The one, thing? Nicotine is one of the hardest addictions to break. But have you considered that? Because it's also just very, very expensive when we're it just is. strictly talking financial. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've definitely, I've definitely cut back. I, don't, I've, I've, I haven't tried cutting out 
yeah. but just I mean being under being under less stress uh, you know uh, since you know getting out from underneath that depression and stuff like I've definitely cut back and it's my spending on it has cut down good because yeah just that one trip was like almost 30 bucks in back mm-hmm. of pass and some Microsoft ultimate thing now this Kimberly Boyd Co- oh counseling that's that's my oh, uh, that's my therapy it's sessions. shortened that makes sense mm-hmm. good i i marked those as question marks did not know so that's totally good let's also cut the name of it as well and cash app and out four hundred dollars mm. that was given back to me as cash okay and there's a counseling again. High end of the woodlands, Jackson Brew Coffee, Taco Fuego, paying for a lot of parking constantly. And that was at that old job. Austin and using Uber, Zellin $90 out, parking some more, Jackson Brew Coffee, obsessed with that place, Franklin Street, and Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. So, and Beetlejuice. You made me say it three times. Jackson Brew and uh, Taco Fuego are both like kiosks that were in that that uh, place I was working at that just left. And they also don't Great. provide Great. So pretty much like the money that you were making immediately went to just blowing it on crap you didn't need. Lovely. And East King, East Side King. Same, same area. Same thing. That doesn't justify it. And parking all the time. And there's the vapor again, $60, that one. And Pizza Hut, Zellin out $30. Who knows where that went? And Wood with Sons Local Tap, Wood with Sons Local Tap. Have you stopped drinking or have you just cut back to what is considered like societally based a healthy amount or something like what, like what is your relationship right now uh, with alcohol i've i've gone back and forth uh i've okay. cut it out completely for a couple weeks at a time what do you think is best for you realistically do you think would you just desc- are we financially or not financially just for your own health for my own health and, and uh i don't know i mean so you had an issue of it sounds like it sounds like and this is again Hmm. Not even close to my specialty, but it just sounds like you had an issue where when you started drinking, you couldn't stop and then you blacked out. Would you say that that was your issue or do you have an issue of more alcoholic where you're like, you have to drink? You have to drink or you No, I don't ever feel like I like I have okay. to drink. I don't have withdrawals or anything. So it's more I'm moderation and everything like that? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. uh, it, it was, you know, that... That party animal lifestyle that, uh, you know, I had gotten comfortable with being a musician for 10 years uh, and you just like, you you don't want the night to end. So you keep going and then you black out and then, you, and then problems happen. But I haven't blacked out in a while. So I'm feeling pretty good about that one. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, okay. Then obviously that's between you and your mental health expert yeah. figuring that out. So that's good. Uh, I was just trying to pinpoint to see where we might be. Now, what I am happy with is a six thousand dollars in a Roth IRA. Did you max it out like one year and left it, or just yeah, yeah, ma- max it out the when I when I first opened it and put the uh, what was left over into a brokerage account. What I couldn't add into my IRA that year. Oh, what year was this? Uh, I was like 19, maybe 20 years no, old. No, why have we not touched the sense? Because it, 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 I've had fluctuations on income. and I mean, I've added to it a few times. 2019, not, where would you be right now? Uh, who knows, man? I definitely didn't purchase anything during, during the pandemic. Since 2019, the S&P 500 went, and we, you know, we've had some down years for sure. For sure. 2019 went from... 2700 the S&P being worth to right now 4500 Your money would have doubled the money you're continuing to put in. So mm. I don't think you max this out, by the way. Oh, I could only put in five grand. I was in, I'm in a tax bracket. That's what it was. Five grand, yeah. It was five grand at the yeah. time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because now it's 6500 mm-hmm. So it increases with inflation, at least it's supposed to. But even still, hmm. well, I guess with the things that are in, because some of these I don't know. I do know the Vanguard, this Vanguard fund and the... A couple of these funds I'm just not 100% sure on, so I guess I don't know the returns over that time. I think I'm at like 15% over the courses that I've had year-to-date. Okay. Oh, year-to-date. Yeah, no, it's been, with where we're standing right now, it's been a good year, thanks mm. to the past three, this past quarter. Okay, so... I'm not so. So this has been managed... Uh, All I'm saying is, I'm not uh, uh, good. suggesting it was in, to invest in the S&P 500. I am not getting any kind of investment advice. But if you were continuing to invest from 2019, your mm-hmm. money would have doubled. Yeah. In and fact, actually, especially if you're putting if I... it in the drop, that 2020 drop, my goodness. I loved putting money in that 2020 drop when it was at 2300 Woo! Because, again, now it's at 4500 
Then your individual brokerage is in the same funds and there's 1542 So we're definitely behind on retirement, but I am glad you have something at 23 Yeah. I'd want you to be a little further ahead. You're not aggressively behind, but... I, I'd like to be further ahead as well. If you're maxing out every year from the year you started, mm-hmm. you'd be right I'd on be, track to where I'd want you to be. be on, some, on some crazy stuff right there. That'd be good. Yeah, it would be great. I mean, at, at this point, what's clear is you're going to need to immediately cut back on your spending. We need, you need to talk about that with your mental health expert Mm. in terms of the spending being your coping mechanism and how you need to redirect those negative coping, uh, coping actions that you have been taking. Mm. And then we need to pay these cards off and not put any more money on them. Now what you can do, my dude, and I recommend this to especially people your age where the benefits are more likely to be used by you. You could use the Fizz card, of which I have a paid affiliate link in the description below. But okay. I personally like them because I would use them if I'm not a credit card person. And you are not a credit card person. You can't use them. It doesn't make sense. So chop them up, close the accounts, we pay them off, you never have one again. But if you use that card, it acts like a debit card where the moment you swipe it, yes, it is charged like a credit card because mm. it is a credit card, but it's immediately paid off. Pulled out of your debit account. Immediately pulled off from your checking. That's so cool. it's paid. It acts just like a debit card with some of the benefits of a credit card. Okay. So that is the one I would suggest you use. Mm. But, you know, figure out what makes sense for you. All Either way, Capital One and the other Capital One, you. It's gone. It's done. They're killing you. They're death. Yep. No more. They're stupid. You agree to it. Yeah. Again, the last statement we spent. Insane amount of money. And if a g- if you can't afford something, we're not buying that something. And fun fact, you cannot afford any of the things you're purchasing. And you especially cannot afford that thing that is not creating any kind of return on investment right now. Stuff that you should have been able to learn on your own and grind. You're trying to take a shortcut spending that $4,000 on the Photoshop thing. Not Photoshop thing, on the photography thing and mm. uh, the modeling building thing. And I get it. I get it. When at the beginning of a hustle, especially when you see the dream, you're really excited about it. If you see the opportunity to pay a little bit of money, take a shortcut. I get it. I get it. I remember when I started this thing and I wanted, I I looked for a couple different uh, opportunities, but they're all scammy and BS. So I never did it. And then, you know, Mm. we built this thing from the ground up, which was great. But Mm. I get that desire because you see a goal you want to get to. My goal is to hit a thousand subscribers by this time (laughs) since I started, you know, like a thousand subscribers. And I was like, oh, can I get there as quick as possible? So I get it. You shouldn't have done it. You can't return it or refund it, whatever this is. Yeah, I I figured it out. That sucks. Okay, let's look at the value of your car. Uh, It's a 2015 Toyota Tundra SR5. SR5? It's the 5.8 liter V8. Five point, well, what what leader was that again? Is it five five seven or five eight? Five seven. Four wheel drive. Yeah. No, no, no. I got the two wheel. It's just it's just two wheel drive. I didn't like the way the the acceleration on the four wheel drive one was. That rear differential made it too heavy. I want to take a brief moment to thank today's sponsor, Course Careers. If you want to start a high paying career in the technologies industry, but you don't have the experience or the degree, Course Careers is here to help. The replacing college is the modern way people are starting careers, and it's so simple. All you need to do is go through an affordable online course where you learn everything required to actually do the job. Then they help you land a position by partnering with companies who drop their degree and experience requirements to hire course careers graduates into entry-level positions and internships. Check out some of their stories of people like Nyla who went from being a 19-year-old Starbucks barista to making over $60,000 in a remote technology sales career. Or Josh who went from being a college dropout working in retail to making $140,000 just six months after completing course careers. So go to coursecareers.com, which is linked in the description below, to sign up for the free introduction course where you'll learn exactly how you can start a high-paying technology career without a degree or previous experience. And make sure to use the code HAMMER50 to get $50 off on the full course, and all of this is linked in the description below. Thank you again to Course Careers for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, well, no, you're right. You might be able to private market this thing for like, 20,000 bucks. Like, is the condition good? What's the, how many miles? Uh, about 123,000 miles. That's a lot of miles. Yeah. That's a lot of miles. That's a lot more miles than the ones I'm seeing being sold for. So, and the, uh, but these, I mean, these Toyota engines, I know, these I know. Engines, they're going three, 400. I know, but still, at least comparing to the price that I'm seeing one sell for, for 20 to 30. Yeah, that's so high. So maybe 15 to 20, that's what you can get. But even yeah. still, you pocket some cash. So what I would 100% do is sell that, 
let's say you sell it for fifteen thousand dollars. Let's mm-hmm. just say that. Sell, it, pay off that ten thousand dollars, and get yourself a five thousand dollar car. That gets you from A to B. Yep. A to B, safely reliable. Take it to a mechanic. Make sure you get the seal of approval that this thing is gonna last you for a few years and is gonna be safe for you to drive, and it does not need to be anything more than that. Exactly. And it obviously will not require you to put in lots of money. To keep it going. I mean, I'm so going to put, I'm a put air conditioning as a requirement on there. You kind of have to yeah. in Texas, but getting an air conditioning recharge is not crazy. No, no. You can get a can of free on, and, 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 you know, on Amazon. Yeah. So cars should be gone. We should be able to just cut that off our list. We need to build your budget and understand what your life looks like. So rent, do you pay anything for this household that you stay with in the family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I do was, you pay? I'm spending 500 So monthly. you give them 500 Yeah, monthly. Okay. Is that including everything you contribute, like utilities and everything like that? That's just your flat yeah. That's fee? In, that's including everything. It's four hundred in a, in rent, uh, and then I'm adding. I'm I'm contributing at about a hundred bucks of groceries. I'm just uh, little bits and pieces here. And so there you taking, eat the groceries that are there. You contribute to the pile, and then you eat the groceries that are yeah. presented in the house. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because so we also grow quite a bit of stuff, and uh, and and so we're you know we provide some of our own food. Okay, then a hundred dollars groceries. For groceries, which is, I'm so glad I can put that in. Do you have to, I assume you buy your own like deodorant, toothpaste and all Mm -hmm. that stuff. Okay, I'm going to give you an extra $100 to keep your operation alive of life. Like, let's not skimp on toothpaste and all those goodies. Um, Okay, so rent basically doesn't exist. We know, okay, your minimum monthly payment, we are going to take away the car because the car is going to be gone because you're doing that immediately. I would sell that tomorrow. Private sale, don't cut yourself short. I'd at least get $15,000, tr- try to get towards twenty. Whatever okay. you have left, I'd get a $5,000 car, and then the rest of the money I'd put towards paying off the credit card debt, but that's what I would do, okay. knowing just how bad the situation is. So debt, minimum monthly payments at that point will be $285. Those are just your credit cards. That's handleable. That's disgusting is what that is. Absolutely disgusting. Okay. What is your... Well, you're going to have car insurance either way. What's your car insurance now? We'll just bake that in. Uh, I think I'm spending like 180 bucks a month. It's it's relatively cheap. That's pretty chill for your age, especially. Okay. And any what therapy is that out of pocket for you? It is. How much do you spend? Just 20 bucks. Just, just a session? To, How many sessions? Yeah, a month? Uh, uh, once a week. So a week. I will call it four or five. So 20 times 52 divided by 12. 86 dollars for sure and that's that's beautiful and then are you are you on your parents health insurance then i am uh until i turn 26 my stepmother works for verizon and so we have our benefits through her very good blue cross blue Uh, shield 87 bucks rounded up for therapy and that's very happy to put that in and you mentioned working out do you go to the gym no i own all of my equipment i got tired of spending 1500 dollars a year on crossfit okay okay yeah i was gonna say like all right let's go to planet fitness but sure so but that's fine any other minimum expense, minimum monthly expenses that you think of for your music and stuff like that? Do you have monthly subscriptions to these side hustles that you're trying to do? No, I pay a yearly fee uh, of like a hundred dollars for DistroKid, and that's what I release all my music on. So I don't, I don't have any uh, like monthly fees as far yeah. as music production goes. Subscriptions like Netflix and all of them. No, use the family. I do. So no other minimum monthly payments that you can think of that you have. What's your phone bill? There's that taken care of by the family. So I paid for all my orthodontics whenever I was in high school. So my mom just decided she's just going to cover my phone bill and indefinitely. That's interesting. First time I've ever heard that. I know. Um, and she she was happy to do it because she didn't want to spend that bill on, you know, have both the bills going on with my uh, orthodontics and uh, then the phone bill back then. So she just like, just cover your, your payments for your Invisalign. Right. So even with you living like the most blessed life in terms of what your expenses are, minimum required to survive, you're still over 50% of your income going to your needs. Yeah. And that's with us giving you $100 for groceries and $400 to rent. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And no car payment because you'll have one in cash at the time. So we do have an income problem in that regard. Mm -hmm. That is not why you are in this situation, to be clear. No. But it will help you dig out of this situation as well. Absolutely. 1,152 so, is what you need to survive on a minimum monthly basis. What I need you to do is when you sell this car, mm. 
Okay, so there's going to be a couple different avenues we go down. Okay. Number one, you sell the car. You have a few extra thousand dollars after you get your uh, two thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. After you get your five thousand dollar car, mm-hmm. you put a thousand one hundred fifty two in a high yield savings account. You can do SoFi. That's the one I use. Fill the link in the description okay. below. Uh, that's what I personally use because I like it, and I only take on affiliates that I use okay. or would use. But you can use that because it's four point four percent interest uh, on your behalf. That's your one month emergency fund, and then the rest I would put towards paying off the $2,534 credit card. But if you do not get any money extra after the car that you purchase Mm -hmm. from paying off the car loan, from selling your car, then buying a new car, then what we are doing with the extra, do the math, because you are not spending a single penny outside of what I've given you because your debt is death compared to your income, absolute death and holding you back aggressively. Okay. You have $1,048 left on a minimum on a monthly basis. And what you're going to do is you're going to stockpile that in a high yield savings account like SoFi and then a little bit the next month. So it's like a month and a week and you have a one month okay. emergency fund. Okay. Cause okay. you don't have anything in savings anywhere outside of the retirement. We looked at correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you need to have that one month in case anything happens for a month. Again, like a pandemic. Mm-hmm. You remember that? This will help sustain you for at least a month. Okay. Now, from there, what you should 100% do is how many hours a week are you working? Realistically, be honest. Uh, it, and that's including Across everything. Like, like that office brings work. in money. Uh, uh, it brings in, I don't know, maybe like 30, 35 hours. Okay, you, you're working 50 hours a week. Okay. Okay, so go to a coffee shop, get a job. I don't care. Go work anywhere. A lot of oh, the- yeah, yeah, I've got job interviews lined up this week. Good. A lot of the experience-based places and service-based things are still mm-hmm. very strong for hiring. Mm-hmm. That can be a little hard right now, um, but it's still very strong for hiring in a lot of those businesses. I was going to I was gonna think you'd be okay at sales. I don't know. I feel like I could hear you on the other side of a phone. Yeah. You could sell. So I was going to maybe suggest that for a career path, but you clearly want to go down the road of the acting, modeling, and stuff, which I'm totally cool with. You just need to be able to sustain yourself from your side jobs. So I was going to say get yourself like a tech sales qualification through course careers or something, but I don't even know if that would make sense for you specifically. I think that makes sense more for someone who really wants to get into that. I assume that's Mm -hmm. not something you want to get into. It doesn't really sound like that much fun to me, honestly. Yeah. Well, it's not always about fun. Sometimes it's about living the life that we are dealt. But... Wishes and stuff are good, but I'm supposed to be the mean, realistic person. No, that's fine. That's fine. (laughs) Trying to make sure you can navigate the culture that we have. So you do that week, week and a half, or a month, month and a week. You have a one-month emergency fund. Then Mm -hmm. out of the cards that you have, $2,534, divide that by the $1,048 you have left on a minimum monthly basis. takes two and a half months. So we'll call this total four months for a one-month emergency fund and paying off your small credit card okay and then with the money that you have left oh with the money that you now get to keep an extra 88 dollars a month because that card is paid off no more minimum monthly payments on that Mm -hmm. we're going to say you can put an additional 1150 dollars towards the debt then the other card is paid off in another four months so eight months one month emergency fund car is sold for you have a car in cash of five thousand dollars you have paid off both credit cards you are now debt free Mm -hmm. in eight months that's practically nothing compared to the rest of your life but all it requires is you not going and dropping four thousand dollars on something that's probably taking advantage of you and you not spending $800, $600 a month eating out and then additional additional $200 on more bullshit that you do not need. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you're in the credit card debt until you're in your 30s. Yeah. Which makes no sense and you're just losing interest and just getting absolutely clobbered. That's certainly not the plan. Well, from the actions that have been provided from Mm -hmm. the documents that we have seen, it is in fact your plan. But... Mm. It is not your desire. No. Your desires have been more kicked the can down the road, though, in terms of the actions that you're taking in order to make progress on the debt. Okay. This is an actual plan that you can follow by following my aggressive budget. It's mm. like an aggressive diet because you're like on my 600 pound life or something. And you're like 800 pounds and you're about to die the next day. Okay. So doctor now puts them on an aggressive diet so they can hopefully see a, another year of life. Mm. 
Well, guess what? You're going to see many years of life in good finances if you actually follow this, or you can just f*** around still as you've done and kick the can down the road in terms of your desires and the actions that are following them. Mm. And you can just be in debt when you're in your 30s as well and just transfer the debt to another debt because your car eventually dies and you still have the car debt and then you have to go get more debt to get another car and stuff like that. Mm. And a bunch of bull- you never have an emergency fund, another pandemic happens, and then you have to go further into debt because you don't have any income. You're snowballing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I'm saying like the, uh, the, not you as in your snowballing. I mean, like this situation no, I, snowballs like that. It, yes, it, it yeah. Ends up this is a, a vicious cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So, eight months, one month emergency fund, all debt is gone. Your car, your card is sold and you get a $5,000 car in cash if you get this for the value, minimum value that you should be able to get it for. Mm. Then from there, with the money that you have extra, we should have about $1,300 and you already have $1,100. If the two, we need to have about $10,000 saved up. Your six month emergency fund for what your needs are, are less than $10,000. I need you to have minimum $10,000 because that'll cover at least some aggressive medical bill. Uh, not an aggressive medical bill because they can get much more than that, but it'll cover a medical bill ish. Yeah. I know it'll cover a car that breaks and you have to go get it. So that's why we do mm-hmm. minimum $10,000. Ten thousand dollars. You already have. You need essentially eight thousand nine hundred dollars, and you have an extra one thousand three hundred dollars. They can put towards that on a minimum monthly basis. It's going to take seven months. So in total, from having a one month emergency fund, selling your car, getting a five thousand dollar car in cash, paying off a venture card, paying off the other Capital One card, and then saving up for a ten thousand dollar fully funded emergency fund takes you fifteen years. So a month, a year and a quarter. You're in a quarter and your life is completely turned around. But only at that point have you achieved the base level necessary for our financial, uh, you know, longevity. That's Wait. the base level. That's like level zero. Mm. Right now you're just like level negative 10. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Four out of 10? I don't think so. But that's okay because in 15 months... You're sitting at the age of 24. You're not even halfway through your 20s yet. And we can start investing at least 20% of your income. Mm. And as you're investing 20% of your income, even on a lower income, and hopefully we continue this increase because you're continuing to hustle, you're working the hours. And trust me, man, when you're trying to build the stuff in the arts, especially which is what you're working on, you, you're going to be working 50 hours a week. Yeah. Because you need to also make more money. Just because you're putting a lot of hours into something that you want to eventually be your career doesn't mean you can skimp out on the other things. Mm. Because you can't live at home forever. I'm totally cool with you living at home. We're a culture where it's like, get out at 18. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't always make sense. Like, if you look at everywhere else in the world, it's totally, it's okay for you to live at home if you have a good relationship with them. Well, I was was out of the house from 20 till this sure. year. Uh, but again, what I'm saying is you probably don't want to live there forever. No, God, no. no. And you can't even come close to affording right now to live anywhere but home. Cause again, your needs right now on an extremely minimal budget is 52% of your income. Mm. So you're going to be working like 50 hours a week because you're probably going to be working like 35 to 40 hours a week in like money making stuff. And then as many hours as you can in the extra side hustle stuff that you're trying to do and build that business of. Mm. So you're going to be doing this for a while, but that's the life you've chosen and that's okay. Yeah. But I need you to bring in more money and you're investing minimum 20% so that there is a chance for retirement because as we are continuing down the gig road, you know, you could be gigging all the way through your sixties and seventies. I still Mm. need you in a moment of like, okay, I worked forever and it's time to just like, Live. I'm ready to decades, hang it up. Yeah, that you are actually able to do that and not die on the Walmart floor. Okay, which is where you're headed based on your own situation, by the way. But that's where most people are headed on this show. Be like some of the people who are giving me progress updates of what who we will have on for their updates once they've hit a certain goal that we've mentioned. Um, be like those people. Pay off the debts. Start making the progress, and you can live an amazing life. Okay, that's your choice. No, I think I, that's I, part of the biggest reason why I came to this show, like and wanted to apply and all that, is because doing something like this is something that uh, my dad, who I'm staying with, and I had talked about doing uh, for like a few weeks, just going over and okay. putting in a hard set budget because he come, yeah. uh, he was a branch manager of a bunch of different uh, telecommunications companies uh, okay. and did built out markets all over the, the Southeast side of America. Uh, and so he's, he's done finance. He's, he's had to, to balance budgets for projects and stuff like that. So he's seen my finances and gone, Hey dude, this is f-ed up and <laughs> yeah. you, you should fix this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just, I haven't wanted to, to sit down with my dad about it. I don't want to talk about this stuff with my dad. 
You know, it's much easier to to sit across from somebody who you and I don't know each other. Yeah, we've never met. We can go. We can we can talk about this, and you and and you know, you scrape me up about it a little bit. That's fine. Like I, you know, I'm I'm I'd rather know exactly what I need to do and take a lashing for it. Which is why I go hard, so you know how bad it actually is. Because yeah. a lot of people that are like, it's not good. I'm not that bad either. No, it's terrible. No, I'm terrified of it. It scares me every single day. Okay. I, I lay in bed thinking about it. In that case, then there's no more talk. There's no more wishing for what the solution is. There's no more even dreaming of what the solution is in the past. Now is action. Demonstrate your actions. You have not up until this point based on your statements. And that's okay because we're having the conversation now. Yeah. We're having the conversation now. We're not having it in the past. Mm -hmm. So the past is the past. It's whatever. What happens from here is just depend on your actions. So actually do what is necessary to live a good life financially. Mm. Can you go into therapy and all that stuff? Absolutely. I 100% encourage that for everyone for your life outside of finances. But financially speaking, strictly just follow this budget, pay off the debt in the way that we talked about, get rid of the car, save up the emergency fund, start investing in that 20% man. And you live a good life. You live a good life and bring in some more income by working more hours and on the stuff that isn't just, the extra stuff that you're trying to build. Yeah. Put the time in for that, absolutely. But you're going to be working the vast majority of your life. Yeah. Um, the vast majority of your weeks. And that's okay. So actions, man. Now mm. it's all about actions. No more talk. Show us what it's like. Come back in a year and a quarter. Have that debt gone, fully funded emergency fund, and start investing. Prove me wrong that you are not a person who has taken the actions. Prove me wrong. Okay. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, man, I, I look forward to, to trying to implement what we talked about today and, and see where I can be in the next year. See if, if you, if I hit that goal and, and come back on the show and, and we have a very different conversation sitting here at that time. If, if you're still at this location, you know, and by then, you know, multi-million subscribers and you know, big studio. So well, that's up to you. <laughs> For Addison, again, it's going to come down to action. Lots of talk, lots of desires, but it needs to be action. Hammer Financial Score, he gave himself a 4 out of 10, which again would be like an average person like you're doing. Okay, not great, not bad, uh, which would be a 5 out of 10. So his Hammer Financial Score spending a budget can't be higher than 0 out of 10. That's all the bull. He spent, okay, money he did not have, twice as much as he brings in on just crap. It didn't make sense. I can't be higher than zero out of 10 debt because there's no collections, no IRS debt. It's going to be a one out of 10, but I cannot give higher because of the horrible credit card interest rates and just putting more money on that retirement. I am happy he has a little bit in there. So for his age, I'm going to give a three out of 10. I'm adjusting that for his age, three out of 10. I'd like that to be a little higher though, but I'm glad he started an emergency fund. There's nothing zero out of 10 real estate, not even part of the conversation lives with his family. Zero out of 10 hammer financial score, one out of 10. Check out all the resources I've linked in the description below. They are my paid affiliate links and they are the resources that I do either use or would use in specific situations. You can get a free $5 by putting $5 into Acorns using my link or you can get 4.4% on your money through High Yield Savings account through SoFi, which is what I use. And you can get bonuses all the way up to $250. And don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Thanks.